All right. Hey, everybody. This is Barney Kunze, and welcome. We are live um, now, finally. Um, as some of you know, the whole entire universe came to a screeching halt on Wednesday. I think it's because Dr. Ruth Roberts and I were about to do a Facebook Live, and we crashed the internet, and Facebook shut down, and then Instagram shut down, and then everybody was like, oh my goodness, what happened? Barney and Dr. Ruth broke the internet, and then Facebook mm -hmm. had to shut down. So <laughs> obviously <laughs> I'm kidding, um, but uh, it was just kind of funny because both Ruth and I, probably Dr. Ruth and I, um, were like, what the heck is going on here? We're just like, there's nothing that we can do. Uh, we just couldn't figure it out, and Dr. Ruth was like, is it on my end? Is, is it my computer? Is it my phone? Is it the internet? And so anyway, so if you guys are trying to get on, you know, I'm sure you got eventually figured it out that there's just, this is life, right? Um, like Forrest Gump says, cover your ears if you have sensitive ears, but like it's the, my, one of my favorite lines from Forrest Gump is shit happens, right? And you just got to kind of go with the flow. And so we improvised, we adapted, we overcame the challenge and here we are. So um, there's my little warm welcome for you. Thanks for tuning in. I see that there's about 25 or 30 of you guys on already live. Um, and, uh, Nice seeing everybody on here. So um, do me a huge favor because we always love to see where we're reaching out into the world um, when it comes to just all the different countries and states and provinces that are on. So just do us a favor and just let us know what state um, and or country that you're from. And uh, and by the way, if you have any questions, you can go ahead and post them in the, uh, the, the chat. I was going to say in the chat box. Just go and post them as a comment and then I will do my best to uh, answer them for you, okay? So I'm gonna bring in Dr. Ruth Roberts, who is an amazing presenter. And Dr. Ruth, welcome, and thank you for being here today. Thanks for having me, Barney, I really appreciate it. And I'm uh, really glad to be able to help you guys out, hopefully if you're uh, having some issues with kidney disease. And anybody out in New Mexico, that's where I am right now, out in Abiquí, which is where George O'Keefe did most of her painting so really cool. excited to start exploring it but it looks like uh texas colorado minnesota delaware so a good smattering across from nice the, the country and then and uh across the there, ocean great to see you from denmark too wonderful nice. awesome so dr ruth since um you are uh, to tell us a little bit about you know before we jump into some of the the questions and some things that we're going to talk about today mm -hmm. yeah i really feel um excited because uh, there's a lot that we have to talk about, not only with like questions and some of your brilliance and wisdom that you can share with our community and everybody who's tuned in here, um, but also we're gonna talk about your monthly mini masterclass that's coming up later this month and about the Animal Wellness Summit Live or AWS Live Conference that's coming up in June. Um, but before we get to that, can you just tell us um, what you guys are doing? You, uh, I understand, I think, um, you guys got rid of your house and now you're traveling the countryside. Do you mind kind of sharing a little bit about that and how your experience has been? Happy to. So yeah, my wife and I sold basically everything we we owned and hit the road in June of uh, of last year with our dog Mona, and uh, awesome Mexico, and our cat Pepe. And uh, Pepe was at first aghast about traveling, but he's really turned into an amazing travel cat. So we've been just going across the country through the West, Western end, came up into um, uh, BC a little bit last summer and probably going to end up back that way this summer as well. Spent nice. a couple of months down in uh, a beautiful island called Roatan off the coast of Honduras snorkeling and, and really enjoying the warm weather down there. So it's it's been a ball. Um, the fact that the way I do my work is, is through uh, telephone calls, Zoom conferences, things like that. It makes it so that I can do this anywhere I am. And um, the other, the other big thing is that I do consultations for people. I do medical record reviews and then make recommendations, both from a conventional sense and um, veterinary medicine, so you understand what your veterinarian is offering you, or or saying recommending to you, and then bringing in things like home cooked food, which it you know based on the original crock pet diet, as well as. Um, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine herbals and Western herbals and nutritional uh, supplements. So I take both a 
traditional Chinese veterinary medicine uh, perspective as well as a functional medicine perspective. And that's what I talked a lot about in the uh, in the kidney talk I gave you guys during the Animal Wellness Summit. So that's what I do. We're gonna, I'm gonna try to start doing some live meetings uh, as we begin traveling through the, the West again. So for anybody out in um, Utah, Nevada, and California, those are the next three states on our, our list through the uh, middle of March and um, I believe right up to the 1st of June. So we'll uh, put some travel spots, uh, towns we're gonna be in up on my website on drruthroberts.com. And if you've got a group of 10 or more folks that you think would be interested in what I've got to say, just let me know and I'm happy to put together a talk for you based on what the group is interested in and go from there. Well, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you do, so right now, here we go. I was just trying to get the link up. So uh, I, got, I did get this right. I helped Dr. Ruth you did. You okay. got it. Um, so you're like the traveling Dr. Ruth. You can go <laughs> to people. Um, so people are the states again um, that are going to come up in the next little while are, what did you say, Utah, Nevada? You're right. Utah, Nevada, and California. And okay, cool. uh, yeah, it'll be awesome. We're going to be in Santa Fe for a week next week as well. But um, yeah, we're just, just having a ball and the pets are awesome. having a good time too. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you have them with you then? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yes. Nice. Okay. So we've, we've, uh, come up with some very interesting ways to do the crock pet diet on the road. It's yeah. sort of like whatever's available in the, uh, in the house is kind of what we end up cooking with. So it's been great. Well, that's pretty neat because then that way, so you really then, so this is kind of cool. So let's let's get into that. Why don't you tell if there is some people that have no idea when they, when you say the crop pet diet, uh, tell them a little bit about that. And before you do, I just want to add that I think what's really cool about it is the fact that you really just need your crock pot, and then you can buy your su supplies, um, and you can do that while you're on the road because we plan on doing that. We you know turn into a a, a traveling family that will go around the country and the world. Um, and when we bring our pets with us, that we can do the same thing. So tell just a little uh, kind of summary of the crop pet diet, because I feel like some people might be on here that have no idea what it is. Right. And so in a in a world of um, most holistic veterinarians telling you you need to feed raw, again, I come from the perspective of traditional Chinese veterinary medicine and the idea that the stomach is the cooker of the 100-degree soup. So if you're throwing raw food down into your pet's stomach, um, if your pet's already sick, especially, um, I think it's very, very difficult for them to digest. And so I developed a diet back in 2006, right, as the pet, pet food, first big pet food recall came out. And people were flying in off the streets to get the recipe, you know, because they just didn't know what to trust. And what we saw was that all of a sudden IBS disease went away, skin disease went away, all this stuff. And so over the years um, and working with my own health issues and trying to figure out, okay, what works, what doesn't work, um, what I came upon is basically a paleo diet. And so essentially the crock pet diet is paleo for pets. And the goal is to give you a recipe that you can do in a batch to make this sustainable and easy for you to carry off. Many of the TCVM vets will give you recipes for like a day of food. And that's just, we, so many of us don't cook for ourselves, or if we do, we're using crock pots to cook or something like that, a slow cooker, an Instapot. And so the goal is to give you something that's easy to do, that's sustainable, that your pet will love. And frankly, if you come home starving, you can add a little salt and some seasoning and you'll like it too. And basically it's just food you get from the grocery store. You do have to add uh, a little bit of calcium to balance the calcium phosphorus ratio and um, also add some good healthy fats like coconut oil, grapeseed oil, avocado oil, things of that nature, and then add a multivitamin. Um, and there's tons of them out there. I did create one called Holistic Total Body Support that includes glandular materials because I feel like that's a great way to support your pet's endocrine system. So that's pretty much it. That's the uh, crock pet diet in a nutshell. But we've seen, I mean, your sister had an awesome experience. Well, yeah, I was just going to mention that. So my sister, Becky, has two dogs. Um, and 
and the one was just the one the one of them was doing really good at it on it the raw and she was getting really frustrated because she's into you know learning more about homeopathy and um you know making a lot of like fermented food she's just into a lot of natural holistic um just life lifestyle i guess really and so that carries over obviously into with her her pets and animals and so basically one of them she was it was um forget his name uh but he was having some issues with just like having itchy ears and having just some problems and she was getting frustrated yeah. she's like well i'm feeding him raw she's kind of like feel like i'm doing everything right and i think that this is where for me when i when i was talking to her i knew that as i was talking to her she's kind of like okay like in her own way if she ever watches this that i still love you becky but she's like yeah whatever barney like i like <laughs> is there any validity to that um because yeah. i was sharing from my humble experience as a holistic health practitioner myself and i said well maybe it's just that you gotta try something a little different because we um and, and let me know if this is in alignment with the crop type diet because i feel like it is is that um you cannot one you know, diet or feeding protocol can always necessarily work um straight across the board and we use um this uh, a questionnaire system for humans to basically establish what metabolic type they were had they are more geared the kind of design based on where they were born and their ethnic background and all that stuff um and there's three basic types there was mixed type a protein type and then a carbo type and so anyways it basically she just it wasn't going very well and then what did you guys what did you guys work on well and that's it and, and you're absolutely right i'm not uh, trying to bash raw here but for some dogs it just does not work doesn't and work, so yeah. basically she had you know her pup was um four three or four i think so very young to be having chronic ear disease and i think had some gi issues and so we i said okay we'll just give this a try you know give cook the raw food that you've already got and see what happens. And things got better. Um, and then, so she ended up switching to the crock pet diet full on and um, got the supplements, the whole nine yards. And I think within about three to four weeks, the GI issues were gone. The ear issue was gone as well. And that's one of the big things I, I really teach with the diet as well is to rotate what you're eating. So like typical bodybuilder diet is uh, boneless, skinless, chicken breast and broccoli. Well, I, I was lifting for quite a ways. And so I ended up creating my a sensitivity to broccoli because I ate that daily for 18 months. So, wow. I, and I know better, right? So, yeah, the, but, but that's, yeah, <laughs> but that's the deal, you know? So we yeah. teach, we teach people how to adjust the diet to suit what their pet needs. And I will tell you, there are pets that the crock pet diet just does not work for, but it's another option. Yeah, for sure. And I think that that's where I'll pull myself back on the screen here. Um, that's where I, what, why I like it, because again, it's not the, I would always drive my clients nuts because they're like, would you just give me a straight answer? It's either yes or no. It's black or it's white. I'm either <laughs> on this or I'm not. I take this oil or that oil or lift this weight, amount of weight or whatever. And I'm like, well, it depends. Um, and I think that I'm, I'm just relating that to what you do because again, you're not really tied to like, well, everybody needs to go on the crock pot or all the animals. Right. But you that more often than not, it they respond positively or and or maybe you cycle it. But I have a golden rule and I feel like this is what you do too, is that you judge by results, right? Exactly. Um, yeah. If so it's not, not working, getting, it's not working. If it's working, it's yeah. working. Yeah. Yeah, because the if you get too dogmatic about your um, eating or your training principles you know, without getting into anything else about certain beliefs in general, but just looking at it and judging by results. Yes. Um, and and, that, and I, I can't remember exactly what Becky said. All I can say is that I remember her specifically saying, like, holy crap, I had no friggin' idea that it was going to work that well. Um, and she's like, it's actually easier because it's a lot less, you know, preparation. Well, not preparation, but it was just, it's easier. And he's, and bottom line, he's responding favorably. So, Amen. And the other thing yeah. we have to start thinking about, too, is sustainability. In the United States alone, dogs and cats eat 25 to 30 percent of the commercially produced protein. So cows, chickens, all that good stuff. So we're, yeah. you know, we're going to start, start hitting some issues. Right. So, T Tammy, that's a, a good question. And the general guideline is start feeding uh, the volume that you're currently feeding of whatever it is. If you're feeding raw, you're probably going to feed a little bit more. 
if you're feeding dry food, often you can start with the current volume and then adjust based on how your dog looks. Are they looking um, overweight? Then, you know, adjust up and down based on that, or maybe it'll be just right. Yeah, and just for anybody who listens to this in the future, if you don't see the question, it's Tammy just asked, how many cups a day of the crock pet diet do you feed for 60 pound dogs approximately? Yeah, so roughly, and I didn't actually answer your question, but I'm going to say it's roughly <laughs> on the order of a cup and a half to two cups, depending on how active your dog is. Okay, cool. Awesome. Well, that's that's great. Um, yeah, a couple other questions. Uh, this one here, this is a big one. It's probably going to cover up most of the, take up most of the screen from Olivia. So I have an 11-year-old uh, Irish setter, and which may have kidney and liver failure due to tick Uh Ehrlichia, I don't know how to Ehrlichia. pronounce that. Ehrlichia. Good. Ehrlichia. Uh, I treated with essential oils and cilia marina, which apparently work great. Right now, she is a, is presenting a bone deformation or scoliosis at the upper internal side of the tail, close to the anus. She licks a lot, so that it may be very so it may be very painful. That suggested to keep her on carpo, uh, carprofen. Carpro carprofen. Yep. Thank you. Um, you can be my interpreter. Uh, which we stated, pardon me, which we started yesterday and seems to help. I was so desperate, uh, so I wanted to stop the pain. Any holistic suggestions for helping her heal or diminish, disappear the pain with no side effects on the liver or the kidney? That's a doozy. It's a doozy. And man, that sounds, that sounds really rough. So um, there's a couple of things you can do. One, and that's, that's what I talk about constantly, is learn how to control inflammation, which is what's the root of creating the pain, and also the root of what the Ehrlichia did systemically as far as liver and kidney function. And um, so there's things you can use for pain, like high doses of omega-3 fatty acids. And uh, really that dose is about 50 milligrams per pound of body weight. So for an average 50 pound dog, that's 2,800 milligrams of omega-3s. Now, notice I'm saying omega-3 and not fish oil. So if you look at a bottle of fish oil capsules, they're gonna say roughly they have 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams of fish oil, but they only have about 270 milligrams of omega-3 fatty acids. So there's boatloads of products out there. I've got one on my website that is very high potency and also extremely clean. Um, that's gonna be very helpful. Probiotics, believe it or not, um, the good guys in your gut, when they're in charge, they produce anti-inflammatory molecules. This will also support pretty much anything you can think of, kidney disease, liver disease. It's been shown to help control cancer quite a bit. So those are, you know, that's a, those are sort of the two base drive supplements. Um, if there's a really specific local area, you can use essential oil blends. I've got one that I used with um, frankincense, myrrh, uh, lavender, orange, I think, and um, peppermint, and you can use that topically on the site. Um, there's a thing called vetrolaser.com. Uh, it's a website. It's a handheld class three laser, and that's been very effective for treating pain that is not terribly deep. And from what you're describing, this should penetrate down through that tissue. So that's kind of a good list of places to start. Um, if you've got a veterinarian that can do cold laser therapy for you, that's great. Acupuncture certainly is awesome. And again, that's kind of what I do, you know, is, is do case review of medical records and then come up with a treatment plan as well. And please don't feel bad about using carprofen. Your dog was in pain. And so this is the way that you could immediately help her. But your attitude is right in finding other ways to help improve the pain that don't have the impact on the body that the carprofen do, does. So, you know, get them out of pain. At 11, you know, she's, what, 77? And you wouldn't want your mom walking around miserable all the time. So do what you got to do in the short term and then figure out some uh, longer term strategies to help reduce the pain. So I hope that's helpful. And I'm going to see if I can scoot over out of the sunlight, which yeah. <laughs> yeah, it keeps like it's the sun's coming up through the window, evidently. So that's a little bit better. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're on. Yep. Yeah, that I think that was very uh, that was very good, very detailed. And um, Olivia, I think my encouragement for you is exactly what you know Dr. Ruth just did for you here. 
Um, we've had people that have contacted us and, and we use, we that's in usually, but sometimes it's a question like this. Sometimes it's a question like that. And, you know, the challenge uh, can be, it's good to get some guidance to kind of point in this direction. But I want to encourage all of you, um, if you have questions or concerns or you want to consult with Dr. Ruth, just go to her website, drruthroberts.com. Um, and I think the best way by the looks of what I could find on your site, Dr. Ruth, is you just go to the contact form. Yep, or you just hit the shop button. And um, the other thing I can do too, there should be a, a place on the shop where you can sign up for a complimentary 15 minute phone call to see if this is that type of program would be right for you or not right okay. for you. And yeah. I will also try to get you the, uh, the, I'll post the link down in the comments once we're finished here today as well. Sure. Yeah, I was going to see, I'll see if I can try and find it over on the, on the live practice my multi multitasking. Multitasking at yeah. the same time. Yeah. Um, Okay, but that's really great. So I, I what I was just going to say to everybody is just that, um, you know, doing a, a short call or a 30-minute, like just hi hiring or paying Dr. Ruth for her time, you get that focused time and attention, and it literally can, you know, that's part of what we, we do our best in the Animal Wellness Summit, like in our VIP membership and the Facebook group, even though sometimes it's really quiet, um, but we want to give you that, you know, just to know that you have that option and it's really helpful to just know that you have a question, but feel kind of lost. Mm -hmm. Utilize the you know all of the presenters who are part of the, the summit um, to based on whoever you resonate with, and because we're talking to Dr. Ruth, then go and talk to her um, to get some guidance. Because really, it's just that if you can if you can take that approach, Olivia, as we're going to get to the rest of the questions here, um, and for everybody, you know, the old saying is that an ounce of prevention is worth more than a pound of cure. And, you know, I look at it that when you can hire an expert or work with somebody who's been, how long have you been in the field for? Like 20? 30 years 25? almost. 30 yeah. years. Yeah, I think that um, it can it shorten down the curve of not questioning whether the decisions that you're making are accurate or not. Right. Okay, so Julie is asking, my seven-year-old cat was diagnosed with uh, stage one to two uh, kidney disease. What can I make for her as she hates her kidney food in cans and won't eat kibble? Amen. Um, so, and Julia, this is one of the, the things I talk about constantly. Your cat does not have kidney failure. And at this, by feeding a low protein diet, which is what the kidney prescription diets are, you're going to end up creating muscle wasting. And in fact, um, many internal medicine specialists are saying this now. So it's not just us wackadoos out on the fringe of veterinary medicine. So what I would encourage you to do, if she will eat canned food and eat... Um, eat, you know, without a problem. There's, and there is a big issue converting mini cats from a dry food to a canned food. Um, then she is a great candidate actually to feed the crock pet diet. Um, the other thing, so I would, you know, work on that. The other thing I, I will let you guys know too, is right now the um, do it yourself kidney holistic health program and uh, the crock pet diet programs are available on my site for 50% off till, uh, I think the 16th. Um, yeah, so I see this that. Is, yeah, if this is of interest to you, hop on over and check that out. We have a private Facebook community where we can help you adjust the diet based on what your pet needs as well. So we've got several different ways to get help for your pet. So I'd say go for canned food first. Um, if she likes that already, you're, you're golden. And then gradually switch her over to cooked food because that way you can really control exactly the ingredients that are going in there and make that appropriate for for your kitty the other thing i would suggest you try to add in is quercetin which is a, a bioflavonoid and it's used a lot for allergies because it does help reduce circulating levels of histamine in the body the other thing it does in terms of the kidney is it prevents the deposition of advanced glycosylation end products and that's a mouthful but the or will actually start to drop. So one of my own dogs had congenital kidney failure, which is supposed to pretty well, you know, kill them in about uh, something like 250 days. So that was at age three, his creatinine was 3.7, and at 10 now, his creatinine is 0 0.7. And all he has done is stayed on the crock pet diet and taken quercetin for most of his life. Um, so don't 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 get freaked out. Vets like to freak us out. Your conventional vets <laughs> like to freak you out about those creatinine values starting to creep up. But there are definitely options. 
Yeah, that's great. And this is perfect segue into Tina Austin. Hi, Tina, fellow Ontario Canadian just down the road from us. Um, so she's asking, is there anything you can do to help prevent kidney disease? So I feel like this is a giant question, but why don't you give us the, the short story? And that's awesome. the, I mean, that's the, the deal, right? If we can right. all prevent kidney, kidney disease, it's sort of in the human side, it said, if you can prevent kidney disease, then that's the big game changer from a lifespan of 80 to a hundred and, and, uh, uh, a good 100 and not just, you know, this shriveled up mass. So the big thing is, uh, to control inflammation and, um, improve the ability of the body to detoxify and the gut's ability to assimilate nutrients. And so that's part of the goal of the, of the crock pet diet is uh, to do all of those functions in terms of functional medicine approach and to provide enough moisture for the body to um, get rid of waste without really hammering on the kidneys. And so that's, that's my long-term strategy using real food, home cooked food, and then uh, using uh, probiotics, as I mentioned, and it doesn't have to be on a daily basis. And you can also just feed the good guys with prebiotics. They produce anti-inflammatory compounds. They actually support kidney function. And then using uh, omega-3 fatty acids to help reduce inflammation, which have also been shown to support normal kidney function. Yeah, so that's there you, awesome. There you go. That's the... Yeah. That's short the short version. story. <laughs> yes, and I'm sticking right. to it. <laughs> no, that's great. Well, Tina, I hope that helps. Um, <clears throat> nice to see you on here, by the way. She's one of our VIP members. Uh, might even be platinum, but I think she's, I think just maybe VIP. Uh, Melanie, is, I have a five-year-old cat with uh, feline leukemia. She is currently thriving. She also presents with IBD. Any suggestions? You know, there's a product called... T site, I believe it is, that came out over a decade ago for cats with feline leukemia and FIV. And that's something you might revisit with your veterinarian. Um, the goal is to use uh, specific molecules to turn to improve the function of the immune system so that um, the viruses, these retroviruses, are kept under control. There are some cases where. Um, They've also been effect, it's also been effective in inflammatory bowel disease. So I would do, you know, definitely look at that. Again, you know, it, you have to look at what your cat's eating um, in terms of the IBD especially. So if she's eating a, a really high carbohydrate diet, that's going to make the IBD worse. Um, so I'd encourage you to kind of work through um, what you can as far as converting from, especially if they're eating dry food, all, she's eating dry food already, go to canned, and then ideally towards a cooked or a raw diet that she likes. And raw is, seems to be, there are cats that are um, really a, not happy with it, like my cats. We had five, all five of them at the time do a projectile vomiting episode simultaneously, <laughs> which was amazing. Um, but the cat <laughs> raw diet is actually... Um, the kind of theoretically correct diet for cats um, because they are obligate carnivores. So that's where I've kind of converted the uh, crock pet diet to be more uh, higher protein, higher fat, uh, lower in vegetables, things of that nature. So I check that out, uh, probiotics. I mean, it just, again, this is, there are so many different options out there. It just really depends on what your cat is experiencing. Um, and that's where, I hate to say it, but I mean, that's where really medical records review would help me give you better and more specific suggestions. Yeah, that's great. And so, yeah, and I think that's where you, so that you're reviewing the medical records to kind of get specific. Um, it's yes. kind of like, for me, I love marketing you know, I've, I've started, I haven't really announced this publicly, but I mean, most of you probably kind of presume that I know a thing or two, but online marketing and education. Um, hence the summits and put them all together and learn them all myself from scratch. And I'm only sharing this because I'm now getting people that are coming to me and say, Hey, like I need help marketing my business or generating leads or whatever. And then they'll say, well, what do I, what I just need to learn? Like the quick, what's the quick answer to like fix my business? I'm like, well, like, you know, what do you, what's basically ask more questions. And, and I think that's why having a consult is really good too, because then you can, yeah, you can get an I idea. Find, yeah. Like something probably, someone will say or mention and not think that it's relevant. You're like, hang on a second. What did you just say? 
and then you can be more specific. So uh, exactly. that's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. So I see there's a bunch of questions still coming in. Melanie said, I will contact you. Thank you. Um, so good on you. Melanie, you just go to drruthroberts.com and then you go to the contact tab um, and feedback for Dr. Ruth. I don't see anything on here about the 15-minute consult. Thanks, Barney. Um, I'll, I'll yeah. get that ad. Yeah, and I think if you go to the shop tab, you can you can access it from there. But um, Yeah, and I, it's probably I just, be, yeah, I couldn't maybe, find it on there. But, but if they yeah. contact you, then that you, would work just as good. You got it. Okay, so the next one in line, um, let's see here, Anne, let me just pull this up. So with early kidney disease, you have said that a diet high in quality protein is okay, but how can I be sure not to include too much phosphorus uh, in diet? Uh, dog has borderline um, protein proteinuria um, and 1.007 urine specific gravity, all other labs are okay. And that's a really valid question. So again, you know, these are all general answers and we have to get specific for your pet. So my approach has been to look at where the current phosphorus level is. And I would prefer to use um, things like phosphate binders to help control that um, back down towards the normal level to help kind of decrease the impact on the kidneys. And, um, and then save adjusting the protein down until we just really don't have any other options. Um, again, with using things that control inflammation, that will help improve the proteinuria that your dog's experiencing um, just because of the, the reduction of inflammation. So proteinuria happens when the kidney is no longer able to keep the protein in the body. And often by reducing inflammation and controlling the age uh, in products, um, we can really improve all of the symptoms and all of the lab values. So I hope that's helpful. Yeah, I think so. If, uh, um, pardon me. And if you have any follow-up questions, just top back on yeah. if you're still on live. Yeah, and so quercetin, yeah, quercetin definitely is a great way to go to. That's okay, cool. As, yeah. All right, well, I hope you're enjoying this as much as I am I, and that I people because uh, it's great. I love hearing you teach because I can tell that you're like just your 30, your 30 years you've learned a thing or two and that's extremely valuable for people. <laughs> Thanks. Appreciate that. Um, yeah. And the, by the way, that was my version. If you guys didn't catch on that in Canada, we like to use sarcasm uh, frequently, <laughs> which, so I was saying that she's learned a thing or two in the 30 years of being um, in her industry. So Cheryl's asking, um, friend has an eight-year-old cat that may be going in to kidney to more water and urinating outside a box, any suggestions? Well, I think, you know, if the first thing your friend needs to do, frankly, is go go to your local vet because they're, you know, she could just have a really nasty urinary tract infection or um, she could have crystals in the urine creating the drinking tons of water and urinating outside the box. There could be a behavioral issues. So that's, I mean, that's really where you're, you know, your vet on the ground is going to be the most important person you can reach out to at this point. So, I mean, everybody thinks, oh my God, my cat's got kidney failure because they're drinking a ton of water and urinating like mad. But off, but there are several other potential causes that aren't anywhere near as serious. So that's where I'd go first, figure out what's going on. Yeah, to get, get clear on exactly what the problem is. Yes. Um, Manti's asking, thank you for this. Uh, lost my Persian last year with kidney disease. He was 16. I miss him even today. Wish I had this then. Uh, however, I got a lot of help on uh, Tanya's site. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, I never got, wanted. She, Tanya has an, an exhaustive site about kind of everything kidney disease. Um, oh, so cool. that's awesome, Nancy. I'm glad you found her, and I'm so sorry you lost your baby. Yeah, um, and that's why it's great to have the empowerment, you know, be empowered now. Uh, never wanted to put him through all the tubes and things that suggested. Just want to make him comfortable. I think you just pardon me. I thought there was a question there, but thanks for yeah. sharing, Nancy. Um, yeah, and Lynn's just saying thank you. I realize I'm not on the screen. Not like I've changed in the last couple of seconds since I've been on last, but <laughs> um, and uh, but Lynn's just saying thank you um, for all that you do. What a great resource for pet owners. My pleasure. Um, 
Yeah, and this one, Nancy, I don't know, I think maybe you're just making a comment, but I'm not sure when you said, I tried raw, no way, now I want my dog to eat raw, I think. Uh, it sounds <laughs> like maybe there's some uncertainty there. Um, if I can give you some third-party confirmation or kind of validation to just go with your, your gut and your intuition, and, and regardless, as my great teacher and mentor, who Dr. Ruth Roberts knows very well as well, uh, Paul Check, who's done a lot in holistic health, He's like, here's my three hours on breathing. Now, don't believe anything I just told you. Go out and find, do this for yourself and test raw versus the crock pet diet and make note, make it take notes because it's the whole thing that what we're about here at the Animal Wellness Summit is empowering you through sharing through these online, you know, live weekly coaching calls, the summit, our soon to be conference, um, so that the metaphor is that we can continue to empower you through brilliant presenters and educators like Dr. Ruth um, to feel that you can learn how to fish instead of us just taking you out and fishing for you for the day and then you're fed, right? So I guess my yeah. encouragement, I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, but I just yeah, I mean, to try it. So it sounds like she tried it personally and it didn't work. And that, I mean, raw food for us, if your GI tract is not happy, it can be misery. Um, yeah. So you just, you really do. You just have to try things and see what does and does not work. I'd encourage you if your pet is eating kibble currently to just try a little bit of whatever you want to do next, whether that's raw or what have you. Um, so just take small steps so that you don't end up with a disaster, disaster stool. Yes. <laughs> that could be really fun minus the fun part. Yes. Um, yeah. So, Georgian is asking, uh, my 19 year old kitty has been diagnosed with hypothyroidism. Um, that in turn is affecting her kidney function. Uh, what can I do to naturally deal with both issues? So would you kind of? So it's, it's interesting. Right? So hyperthyroidism, high thyroid is generally caused by a benign tumor in cats. Um, and what it does is produced way too much thyroid hormone and so it can also cause heart disease and a couple of other things. The medications we use to control hyperthyroidism ends up decreasing the uh, heartbeat or the heart rate I should say and so that ends up decreasing blood flow to the kidneys which can unmask kidney disease. And so sometimes we have to just kind of balance what's going on and partially control the hyperthyroidism so that the kidneys don't get into trouble. But that's where, if you haven't done anything, I would certainly suggest going to canned food, quercetin, several things. The other issue, other issue with hyperthyroidism is that many people think it's associated with the liver's inability to get rid of excess hormone. And so sometimes working on liver function is a good way to help control the hyperthyroidism and reduce the amount of uh, medication you might need to keep it under control, if that makes some sense. And there's Chinese yeah. herbs and stuff too. It just depends on what your cat is willing to do as well. Yeah, no, that's great. And again, George Ann, if any questions to follow up, I'd encourage you to reach out to Dr. Ruth and or just um, maybe even leave a comment here after if you're not on uh, right now and you come back and watch this as replay. So Julie is asking, hi, Julia. Um, she likes her can, canned or pouch food. However, I'd like to control ingredients better. She's also very anxious and pacing. Do you recommend CBD oil? Thank you. There's... It, it, as for a short question, there's a lot there. <laughs> there is. So yeah. it, it's a, you know, it's one of those deals. I think uh, you're right to the pouches and cans generally contain gums and multi proteins. And so that's where the crock pet diet is awesome because you can put exactly what you want in it, in it. Um, the other th part of the question with anxiety, I think CBD oil is really a great option. Um, there's a boatload of products out there. Um, I've tried five or six different brands for our dog, Mona. Uh, she's 15 and was, you know, anxious with all the changes we were going through. And um, there is a company based out of Charleston, South Carolina, called Canna Bones. Um, and it's something like C-A-N-N-A hyphen B-O-N-N-E-Z dot com. Uh, Matt and Stacy that run it, what they're doing differently is that they are mixing specific CBD terpenes, which are the active ingredient in the CBD oils, 
based on the specific problem that your pet is experiencing. So check that website out, reach out to them and they'll get you hooked up. They've got some standard formulas for anxiety as well as pain. Uh, the other thing is, is their products are easily half the cost of most of the other stuff I've seen. So really good, really good folks. Hmm. That's good. Um, okay, well, thank you for that. And Julia, hopefully that helps for you. Um, uh, here, this is a short one. Then we've got a couple more. I know there's some really big questions coming up. So we're going to try to get through these. And then we have a couple things we want to share with you about you can, um, where you can get more of Dr. Ruth uh, later this month in our monthly mini masterclass. And also for those of you, um, as we, before we get into this question, who are interested, we you may not have heard this yet, but we just um, have sent out the email notifying that we just put the tickets on sale for our first ever uh, Animal Wellness Summit Live. So AWS Live is what we're calling it. So it's a two-day live conference here in Canada. Dr. Ruth is one of our featured presenters. Um, and you're going to have a chance to talk with her personally. The pres all the presenters that are going to be there will have a speaker's table. She'll have some of her books there. Um, and for those of you traveling in from the U.S., you just need to get your passport. But we're a really cool country if you've never been here. And um, it's going to be a lot of fun. So I just want to put that out there that you'll be able to, uh, if you can't make one of our other events she's going to be doing in the other uh, Utah, Nevada, or California, then you can fly north of the border. And those dates are June 1st and June 2nd of 2019. Uh, so we're about 10 weeks out from that. So Yeah, really beautiful yeah. country. Yeah. And, of course, I'm biased as a Canadian. I love the States, too. Um, but I also I love going there because I know I'm, I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm going to also enjoy coming back to Canada. Um, okay, so for Beth, Beth's question, um, how do we assist an 18-year-old cat um, who is not eating um, that has kidney issues? That gets really tough. Um, okay. And so it sounds like, you know, there's two things going on. At 18, 18 is ancient. Um, and if there is advanced kidney disease, you know, your cat's really at the place where things are just not working well and they... It, it probably feels pretty awful too. So what I would encourage you to do is use sort of the path of least resistance and do the thing that is going to make your cat the happiest. Um, even though you're, you know, probably an advanced kidney disease, what I would do is offer small amounts of a really yummy protein um, so that they keep the cat keeps eating. Um, that's where sub-Q fluids can be helpful, things of that nature. But you may be at a place where really what you want to do is palliative care. And so that's, you know, lots of different options out there. There's tons of um, appetite stimulants you can look at. This is another situation where CBD may be extremely helpful. Um, and frankly, also medical marijuana. Um, if you're in a state that permits that, Dr. Rob Silver has... Canada. Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, all, all of Canada. Yeah. yeah, although you're still having implementation issues. Yeah. Bob Silver has a, a book called Pot for Pets. And so he goes through how to use marijuana safely. But that is a great um, end of life care support uh, mechanism that's, you know, it's a plant that makes them happier, um, mm -hmm. makes them feel a little bit better. So that's another option as well. So I hope that was helpful. Yeah, it was. I think we might have to reach out to. Mr. Rob and see if he wants to be a presenter for this year. I think it, I think it's awesome. I, I've been a huge proponent of mar the benefits of marijuana for a long time. I can say this confidently publicly because now it's legal. I always disagreed with the fact that it was illegal because of the reasons why they made it illegal. And I had a big problem with the fact that, well, alcohol is legal. The stuff they put in medical drugs is legal. Sugar is legal. I mean, you look at what sugar does to the brain compared to cocaine, but marijuana is illegal. Um, I'm not advocating excessive use of it, but I think when used properly as a true, uh, you know, medicine to support the body, I think that it's amazing. You got it. Yeah. So that's pretty neat. Um, speaking of that, related to that, uh, Marty was asking about, could you repeat that website again for the CBD? Did you mention yeah. something about that? Yes, it's uh, Cannabones. I think that's CA, and I'll, I'll put the link in the comments okay. below so you guys can just click off of it, but it's Cannabones is the name of the company. Okay, cool. This is a big one uh, from Jan. Uh, so, yes, that's okay, Jan. You can always come back to the replay. So my 13-year-old golden retriever is starting to show kidney disease. 
slow progression. She has lymphoma in remission and two mast cell tumors that I believe that I may be having removed. I was cooking for her since 2017. I was advised to cut down on protein. I cannot give her raw food uh, as per the oncologist. I now feed her half real human grade food and half Hill's uh, prescription diet. Uh, what suggestions do you have for her diet, for diet for her? Uh, my traditional fat said only 20% protein. Yeah, and we um, are able, I've actually got a version of the crock pet diet that mimics the prescription diets for kidney disease because at some point in this process, we do have to restrict protein. And so that's one option. Um, if the kidney values are not too bad, um, and again, I don't know all of the details, but it sounds like your pup's really got a lot of stuff going on. But if the protein, if the uh, creatinine levels are not too bad and there's, you know, you've got cancer that you've got under control, I wouldn't really restrict protein because the body is fighting really hard to maintain all of the tissues. Another option you could look at, um, it, in, on the human side, there's a couple of studies that said that a dose of collagen, which is roughly, I think, six to eight grams of protein provides the nutrients equivalent to a dose of 25 grams of a, a meat-based protein. And so that may be something to incorporate to continue to provide the amino acids to help support your pet's body. So a couple of different options there for you. But um, yeah, there's we've got a kidney version of the crock pet diet available uh, if that's the way you want to go. But I wouldn't, and I think the standard crock pet diet is around 20 six percent protein as is so it may be that you really don't need to restrict protein at all okay that's great so jan hopefully that helps for you and um again any further questions to clarify anything i know i see lots of comments and some of you just to let you know that we might not be able to get to your questions um directly on the call but uh, dr ruth if she has the time and ability to do so she will I'll, go back and i'll circle circle lines. back this evening um I'll, I'll put those links up. I suggested I've got a couple of other things to do today, but I'll circle back this evening and hit a few more questions for you. Answer a few more. Okay, cool. And Brian. Um, yeah, it's B O B O N N E Z. Okay. Canada. Yeah. 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 And I'll, again, I'll put the link up for you. Okay, cool. Um, thoughts on egg sardines uh, that are fresh. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> Eat them. Yeah. The, the only thing, uh, so eggshell calcium is one of the things that's out there sort of in the internet and I have not found it to be particularly, uh, easy to absorb, but yeah, sardines are awesome because you're going to get a nice boost of omega-3 fatty acids there. Um, yeah. eggs are great. Um, if you use them as a protein source, be prepared for a little sulfur gas. Okay. I think that's good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to poke the next question here. Sorry, I sound a little distracted because I'm showing my male brain with the sometimes inability to multitask. <laughs> <laughs> um, Jessica, big, nice, juicy question here. What is your opinion on protein intake? Recently changed my dog from a home-cooked meat and veggies to raw, no veggies. Uh, just had general blood work done, and her protein levels in urine are slightly higher than normal. Uh, doing a check for urine protein uh, creat uh, creatinine. That what it is, creatinine levels. Uh, I have heard controversy on protein intake in aging pets. My dog is 14. What a cutie, too. She looks like uh, uh, my old my old girl, girl Zoe Princess Pitbull. Oh, yeah. The universe, yeah. So, yeah, the standard answer has been to decrease protein as pets age and humans as well. And, um, yeah, that doesn't work out so well for the reason of, uh, muscle wasting. If you don't have enough, we actually need more protein as we age to maintain the muscle mass that we have. And so if the creatinine values are not that bad, I really don't recommend restricting. Um, the raw diet, again, you're feeding a higher protein diet. So we're going to change the numbers on the paper. And so are the numbers like crazy? Like all of a sudden your dog's got a creatinine of four or did your dog's creatinine go from say 1.4 to 1.7? Um, that doesn't bother me. Your your dog is eating a higher protein diet. If the diet's working, then great, go for it. Um, if it's not, then then punt. Um, and that's where something like the crock pet diet may be more appropriate because it's not as high in protein. 
um, as, as more raw fed. I think raw, typically the ratios are somewhere around 50 to 60% protein, um, 30% fat, and then the remainder in, in complex carbohydrates or vegetables. So it's just sometimes you need to just shift the ratios around a little bit to make the the numbers look better on paper and, you know, frankly, to, to prevent kidney disease. Yep. Yeah, that's that's great. This one, so this is kind of a good follow-up that, that Anne's asking. Thank you. I was wondering what the percentage of protein is in the standard carpet diet. I think you already covered that, but yes, let's yeah, just it's about, clarify that. About 26%. So again, my goal is um, to have roughly a one-third breakdown between protein, fat, and carbohydrate with the diet. Yeah, so that's, that's a mixed diet. Exactly. Um, and how I would interpret that, like that's a mixed diet. If you look on the plate, you're always taught, like you take your plate and you just take third protein, fat, carbs. My golden rule always was, and to some degree is, um, that you take a fistful of serving for portion sizes. So you basically take your, this is for humans. Um, yes. So maybe you take a paw size or a couple of paw sizes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Lotus says she needs more than this little paw. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to come up and say, hey, but yeah. And so, and I also have a keto version too, because that has been extremely helpful for uh, dogs with epilepsy and, um, and cats, frankly, and also dogs with cancer. So we've got a couple of different versions and different ways to approach it. Okay. Well, that's really good. Um, so this is a, let's do, this one's really short. Is it okay to give pickled herring uh, as a treat to a dog? Sure. Yeah. yeah. That's a whole a real food, you know, it is I love packaged. It. Um, okay, great. Well, Beth says, thank you very much. This has been very helpful. Excellent. Thank you uh, from Marty. So that's awesome. Happy to and, be of help. Yeah, this is awesome. Yeah. Uh, this one here from Mabel, I'm um, heavy discussed. Cats. I missed this part. I missed part of this interview. So I don't know if we got into that necessarily, but got into what I missed that part. Uh, uh, missed part of, uh, for me. Uh, have you discussed cat asthma or asthma uh, in cats? No, I, no, we didn't. And again, you know, same basic principles apply. So reduce inflammation, um, improve the gut's ability to detoxify, improve the quality of the organisms living in the gut. Um, and I mean, on the human side, they're showing that probiotics are helpful and prebiotics are also quite helpful in controlling asthma symptoms as well as high doses of omega-3 fatty acids. So same set of principles, get off the pro-inflammatory diet if possible. And again, cats are, they can be carb addicts. And so it can be very difficult to get them to switch food. Okay, cool. Uh, last two questions, because I want to make sure we get some time to talk about your masterclass that's coming up. Sure. Um, and then a little bit more about the, the uh, conference. So this one from Gail, is there anything, is something that you would recommend in TCBM, traditional Chinese veterinary medicine, which, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what that stands for. You got um, it. To, pre to prevent kidney disease. So the, the things you want to do is, so jing, the kidneys control the jing or the essence, right? And so the way to, and the essence is sort of the quality and the quantity of time that you have on this planet. Um, so the things you want to do is eat really well. Um, so when there is an excess of Gucci, which is the chi derived from food that sort of powers the body, um, then at night that Gucci is converted into oh. postnatal jing or postnatal essence in the kidney. And so eating well is extremely important. Um, there's, you know, you can eat things like one, the original recipe for the, for the crock pet diet contains kidney beans. They look like little kidneys and they're blood tonic. So you want to eat foods that will support the kidney, both the yin nature and the yang nature of it. And again, you okay. kind of, that's where you have to look at what's going on with your pet in specific to make some of those fine adjustments. Yeah, that's great. Um, this last one here from Marcy and everybody else. Uh, pardon me for uh, we had, weren't able to get to all, and we do our absolute best. But um, it's a it's a fine art to master. I can tell you that with getting these questions answered. Um, so freeze dried is different how than raw. So I think she's just asking like how is freeze dried? If you're taking your food and it's frozen and then putting the crock pot, maybe. 
Well, what are so your thoughts on that? Free, freeze dried foods are are considered to be raw foods. However, many of them have been pasteurized, which actually makes them not raw anymore. Um, but it is a convenient way for people to start feeding a raw type diet or experimenting with using real food versus the commercial bag of food. So that's kind of the difference. The idea is, and there's a couple of different ones out there. Um, there are just freeze dried proteins. And then there are products like by Honest Kitchen and Sojo's that are freeze dried vegetables as well. And so the idea is you add water and uh, reconstitute them. And then that's a better option than bag of food. It's not as good as the real fresh food though. That's, that's kind of a, that's the way I'd look at it. But a lot of people that do crock pet, that's the way they travel is with freeze dried stuff. Yeah, that's awesome. That's cool. Okay, awesome. So I think we're, we're good for questions for today, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in, asking your questions. I want to share with you a couple last two things that you can get, get a little bit more um, of Dr. Ruth, not only. So for those of you uh, like Tina and Jennifer, there's a couple of other of you VIP and uh, platinum members, which basically for those of you who don't know, we have a membership program. Uh, we've done the Animal Wellness Summit. I know we've had a lot more people that are coming into our community, to our Facebook page. Um, so that we've done the Animal Wellness Summit twice uh, in 2017, 2018. And um, we are doing our third one later this fall. The dates have been set, but I can't remember exactly right now. They're on the website. Um, you can actually go to, uh, the, I'll put the link down below. You can just go in your browser, just type in go.animalwellnesssummit.com and then you can get on the pre-registration. Just basically pre-register for our summit later, later this fall. Um, and then this later this month, we, Dr. Ruth and I are going to be doing a live training um, that we've started doing because what we've been finding is that when we do these, whoops, I just kicked Dr. Ruth off. When we do these, when we do these calls, it, we, our support desk gets, um, sometimes bombarded with questions. I missed this. I had a question. What about this? I want to learn more from that presenter. Um, so we want to encourage you to go ask Dr. Ruth your questions. Um, but there's de a definite need and interest for um, specific trainings on um, a, a given topic. And so we have heard that need and we fulfilled that with what we're doing now um, is through our uh, monthly mini masterclasses. And so I'm going to just pull up, I'm going to put the link up here, um, but I'm going to show you for just a second. I don't know how well this is going to look, but let me try it this way. So Dr. Ruth, can you tell me if it looks, you can see it on your screen? I can see your, um, yes, I can see your uh, okay. web page there. Yep. Okay, cool. For the uh, so, Animal Wellness Summit Live. Awesome. Yes. So this is the Animal Wellness Summit Live. So as you put on there, join to receive over $2,971 worth of animal wellness training for less than $250 with eight expert speakers in just two days. So I basically went through how much approximately each presenter uh, would charge for an hourly rate of consulting and you would spend well over $3,000 to learn from them individually um, at minimum and being very modest. And I, I, I just wanted to, you know, this isn't like some just statement to put it to throw it out there. We wanted to let you know that what you're getting when you come to a live conference like this is that you're going to have an intimate uh, relationship with the presenters in a way that you'll be able to ask them questions. They're not going to be always just hanging around, but you have a very better chance, a better chance of being able to ask some of these questions you know, in break time, uh, when we have our lunch, when we have our dinners, and it's going to be awesome. So right now you see the six presenters that are up here, um, and I'm not going to show everything that's on this page right now because you can easily just go to the link. Um, but we're currently in early birds status or state right now. So 249 is the tickets um, in U.S. dollars, and they will be going up to 299 And you can see what's all included here. Um, but basically you're getting a lunch, a dinner, um, access to the live training and for the first 100 people who buy their tickets uh, to the conference um, you're going to receive the digital recordings um, of all of the presentations in audio and video format um, that we will give you download access um, and that's a $249 value there but for those of you who are like hey Barney that's cool but I'm not you know Canada sounds really cool but I don't want to get my passport or I can't come that weekend but you don't want to miss out on the training, you can just buy the digital recordings um, for the 249. And then That's the awesome. last part here, yeah, it is going to be pretty awesome. And I'm excited to see you, Dr. Ruth, because we haven't actually ever met in person. 
It's I know, it'll be fantastic. <laughs> it'll be all on, it's all been online, so it'll be kind of neat to me. Um, and then the other one, guys, for if you want to learn a little bit more, as you can tell, Dr. Ruth is uh, very um, well experienced and passionate, inspired in teaching what she knows. Um, so this little training, if you're a VIP member um, you, or a platinum member, this is included in your membership, so you don't have to worry about paying for it. You just register. Um, but for just $27, it's an hour and a half training where she's going to talk on specifically on helping senior pets age gracefully by making holistic lifestyle choices. Um, and then it's on Zoom. And then what we do is we open up the lines for um, we open up the lines for Q and A. And so then that way you can actually ask your questions and ask Dr. Roof your questions live on the training. Then it gets recorded, um, and then you get download access in. Um, so you can own them for life in video, audio, and transcripts. So that's the our little like sales pitch, so to speak. Uh, we certainly would love and appreciate your support because we do a lot behind the scenes to support you guys as best as we possibly can um, for free. And I don't want anybody to feel like they have to buy anything, but if it resonates, please go um, you know, join us at the conference, sign up for our free summit later this year, and um, of course, go to drruthroberts.com and you know, take her up on that offer because she has, I went to your site, I thought, you know, is this a mistake? But it looks like it was, it's intentional you're doing that 50% off. Yeah, um, all sale. of the digital yes. products, exactly. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to mention too, Barney, with the masterclass, uh, again, the goal is to prevent disease. And part of that, uh, we're, I'm getting ready to re to publish the, the original Crock Pet Diet ebook. And so anybody that comes on with the class will uh, get a an advanced copy of the of the new book, which will have wow. recipes and all of that good stuff in it. So that'll give you some uh, some meat and potatoes, so to speak, to, well, that's a, pretty cool. to put some of those ideas into action. Well, that's pretty awesome. I, did, I actually, I remember us talking about that, but I yeah. forgot. So thank you for reminding. Sure. So anybody who does the monthly minimum master class for twenty seven dollars, they get your the the, the ebook version, the original of the Crock Pet Diet ebook. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, thank you so much um, for coming on here, and it's great to see you. Always and, a pleasure. And I just want to give you a, give a quick little shout out, Henry. Um, I appreciate you leaving that here. Um, we are unfortunately out of time because uh, I have another call scheduled right after this, and I think Dr. Ruth might have to go too. Yep. But I just want to pull this up, Dr. Ruth, if you can, if you don't mind getting to Henry's question, I would be greatly appreciated just asking he or she, I'm not certain. Um, keto diet. Two words, keto. What's that? Di oh, keto okay, diet. Well, maybe. Yeah. Okay. And I'll, uh, but I'll, I'll circle back, Henry, and um, as I said, and try to answer as many questions as possible. And if I miss any, I'll also put a link up for a free um, mini email consult. So just email me your question. I'll get it answered for you. That's awesome. Yep. Cool. Well, we'll put both Dr. Ruth and I, we have some links that we've got to put on this call. Um, and the last thing I just want to say is thank you for taking the time out of your schedule, whatever it is that you're doing to um, join in with us live. Cause as much as it's fun for us to, you know, joke around and for me to make, uh, you know, dry corny jokes that I think people <laughs> think are funny and to hear Dr. Ruth drop some knowledge bombs. It's yep. uh, it's great to have you guys on here with us. And so um, in closing, just if you found some value in this call uh, and this training, just please tag a friend, share it, you know, with anybody, it eventually will be on YouTube as well. Um, so you can take the link and just share it with anybody. So it's all out there. Indeed. Many thanks for everybody's awesome. participation. Yeah. Sounds good, guys. Have a great weekend. As I say in closing, stay blessed, stay grateful, stay humble, and stay hungry. And um, have a great weekend. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Talk. Uh, we have our next live week coaching call. And then the week following is Dr. Ruth's uh, monthly mini master class. Wonderful. Okay, guys. We'll see you later. Have a great weekend. Cheers. Okay. See you, Dr. Ruth. See you later, Barn.